All right, so I am Mr. Carboni, about to do question number five from the 2022 AP Calculus AB exam. This was not a shared question, this is AB specific. And let me see, I'm reading the question for the first time. Let me pull this up here, and it is, what is going on with my mic here? All right, so we have a differential equation, we have a slope field. Uh, that's kind of an ugly differential equation. Uh, we have two equals two. Okay, so a portion of the slope field is shown. And they ask you to sketch the solution through the point one, two. So when you're doing something like that, you definitely want to hit the point that they tell you to hit. Now, this is going to be kind of hard for me to do because I'm not supposed to screenshot pieces of the questions as I work these problems. So I'm just going to kind of have to eyeball this. And so one, two is here. So here's the point they give you. And your solution, we have a slope of one, it looks like at two. We should have a slope of zero, capping out somewhere around three, I guess, something like that. And as we work to the left, by the way, you want to make sure that you carry your slope field sketches, your solution sketches all the way through the slope field. We're going to have a minimum somewhere along the y-axis, and then we'll go up. We'll have a maximum somewhere around negative two. It's going to look something like that. We should have an, uh, a solution curve that looks about like that. Uh, number B. Oh, this one may be a quick question. Oh, there's a D. Okay. Uh, number B, I have room right here to do B. Write an equation for the line tangent to the curve at the point 1, 2. So I need a slope. So I need dy dx at the point 1, 2, or I could say when x is equal to 1 is going to be, let me go back up here and see my differential equation. That's going to be half sine of pi over 2 times 1 times the square root of 2 plus 1. Two plus, yeah, okay, I'm plugging in 2 for y. Uh, times the square root of 2 plus 7. Sine of power of 2 is 1, so that is half of 1 times 3. That is 3 halves. So my tangent line is y minus 2, I like point slope form, is 3 halves of x minus 1. And then approximating, let me scroll back down to read the question, approximate f of point 8, so that would lead to f of 0.8 being approximately, and this is an approximation, so be correct with your symbols here. I'll be 3 halves of 0.8 minus 1 plus 2, and I would leave my answer exactly like that. If it, if it uh, becomes advantageous to simplify that later, I can. Uh, let's go on to part C. It is known that f double prime is positive from negative 1 to 1 is the approximation in part B an overestimate or an underestimate for f of 0.8. Okay, so, uh, so what we did, we did linear approximation here, and they tell you that on the interval negative 1 to 1, the function's concave up. So if from negative 1 to 1, we're concave up, and I find the tangent at 0.8, and I use that tangent to approximate the function values, you can see with that graph that the tangent line is below the curve, therefore it will be an underestimate, and I'm going to explain that by saying that f double prime of x is greater than 0. Therefore, f of x is concave up. I'm going to make the conclusion of underestimate. I'm going to tie it to the concavity. If you're concave up on the interval, negative 1 to 1. Therefore, the, that says therefore. <laughs> therefore, the approximation in part B is an underestimate. So there we go. Um, that was nice. The, that would have been a tough second derivative to figure out on your own. So I guess that's why they told you. Use separation of variables to find a particular solution to the differential equation. Saw that question co coming. And this is going to be a pretty valuable question, at least four points. So first thing you want to do is separate the variables. Uh, so I'm going to say dy divided by the square root of y plus 7 will equal 1 half the sine of pi over 2x dx. So there's the separation. Now we need to find the antiderivatives of those. And I'm going to come over here. The antiderivative of y plus 7 the square root of y plus 7 in the denominator, I'm going to bring that y plus 7 up to the negative 1 half, and we will power rule that. And because the inside derivative is 1, you can just kind of gloss over that and just do a power rule 
uh, and not worry about the u subs. That's going to be y plus 7 to the 1 half power. And when you divide by 1 half, you multiply by 2. So there's just kind of thinking over here. So left side will integrate to 2. Uh, and y plus 7 to the 1 half is the square root of y plus 7 will equal. And the antiderivative of sine, I'm going to ignore the 1 half, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine of pi over 2x. Uh, and uh, we'll end up dividing by the pi over 2. That is technically a u sub problem, but that structure is so common where you do the antiderivative of like sine of a times x, you'll end up dividing by that a. So I found the antiderivative. Don't forget your plus c going to clean this up just a little bit because we have some more work to do here. Um, so I'm going to say 2 root y plus 7 is equal to, and this will clean up to negative 1 over pi times the cosine of pi over 2x plus c. And now I need to use my initial condition f of 1 equals 2 to solve for c. f of 1 equals 2 will lead to 2 times the square root of 9, which is 3, equals, and the cosine, oh, this is sexy. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that's just going to be c. So c is 6. And then I can take that over here, plug my 6 back in, and then we have a bunch of algebra to finish solving for y. 1 over pi, cosine of pi over 2x plus 6, uh, divide by 2. So the square root of y plus 7 will equal negative 1 over 2 root pi. No, not negative 1 over 2 pi. I don't know where the square root came from. Cosine of pi over 2x, 6 divided by 2 is 3. We will square that whole thing and subtract 7 to have my final solution of negative 1 over 2 pi cosine pi over 2x plus 3 all squared minus 7. And there's my solution. Hopefully I didn't make any careless mistakes. So there is number 5 and we have one more to go.